Hi, I'm Tony. This is Slack. Welcome to Smog Vlog. Today we're going to be reviewing the Vecino D30 by Wismec. Welcome back in the room, guys. Like we said, the Vecino D30 from Wismec. Uh, it's a newish device, like pen style device, all in one. However, unlike a lot of these pen devices, you actually have variable wattage down the bottom and even a bypass mode. So yeah, it's built around the 26650 format, but bigger isn't always better, as we always know. Or is it? Join us as we find out. Yeah, we're going to put this bad boy through its paces and uh, yeah, we'll see if it is as good in real life as the stats stay on paper. Okay, we're going to be talking about the tank first and then we're going to move on to talk about the battery and then the kit as a whole. But before we do any of that, let's dive down for an unboxing. Okay, cheers Slack and Tony for that exquisite handover, I'm sure we'll all agree. As they said, the unboxing of the Ficino D30 from Wismec. Tour around the box, you've got your scratch and sniff on the side there. Sticker here telling you what colour we got. Nothing top and bottom, nothing on the side. On the back, updated version of the original Vecino battery. The other thing they're touting on here is uh, new atomizer heads, which are supposed to give you great head and uh, unexpected large vapour. Further down we've got the standard configuration, you know, what's included in the box, atomizer, battery, triple heads, nothing like a bit of triple head, USB cable and user manual. Down the bottom here we note on the box that it says maximum output wattage 60 watts. Now for you guys I have ordered a special unboxing blade and here it is. Right, let's get this sucker open. Uh, because I've invested money in it, I'm actually going to do both ends. Yeah, that should do it. There we are, straight into the good stuff. The Vecino battery, they're looking very much like um, Wismet's Venti battery. Obviously with the added benefit of bypass this time. <laughs> awesome. Quality. Right, we'll stick that to one side for the minute and check what else is in the box. Usual battery safety. Vecino D30's user manual is wordy. French, German. Spanish, Russian, and Italian. Okay, diving down further into the uh, Black Lagoon. We have a standard crappy USB. And that's it. Back over to the good stuff. I am going to end up stabbing myself with this, I know it. Okay, so this time, Wismec, Wismec, I still haven't figured out how we're saying that yet have developed this 0.2 ohm triple coil for the D30. Two big juice well holes at either side and in the top we've uh, got that metal gauze to prevent spit back which is awesome. Alright, track him to one side for the minute. Let's have a look at the tank. That is a big bastard tank. So the Vecino D30's tank, a honking fucking 6mm tank. At the minute what looks to be a plastic drip tip. Taking the tank apart, oh they have included a second so I've just opened up that other one for no fucking reason. Excellent. Okay so an interesting design on this tank this time with um, your air goes in at the bottom here down into these two holes either side and with your coil loaded in there you'll be sucking that straight up through that coil, up through the coil with the coil loaded in here, you've actually got a silicone O-ring at the top here to prevent any e-juice getting into the um, chimney. And when your coil gets loaded in there like that, you can see your uh, your juice holes on the side of your coil. Ah, that's interesting. Right, your airflow control ring <laughs> ring ring actually comes off, and it's actually protected by 
the silicon o-ring here as well that is a nice nice little touch there which will help prevent any e-juice or condensation actually leaking out of this and then you know forming on the top of your mod inside a cup and your airflow control is actually stopping at either end it will only go so far and then it will stop which is brilliant so you can just close it off or open it up as, as much as you want within the dimensions of the uh, on and off effectively for the tank which is great not convinced on this plastic drip tip at all and couldn't have they bored out the top no pros and cons wait for pros and cons all right top of the tank off and i've just noticed that the o-rings at the bottom of the tank are, are actually white to prevent any juice leaking out the bottom double o-ringed as well which is awesome around the top You've got an O-ring outer and an O-ring inner to, to protect the chimney from any e-juice getting in there. And there's the top of our coil. Right, now moving over to the big bastard fucking 30mm battery. Jesus. USB on the back, LED indicator for charge status. If it's anything like the Venti, then it will be white. Button looks very similar. Five clicks on, five clicks off. Here's where it changes, down the bottom. And down the bottom we have zoom 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 okay zoomed into the bottom of the battery we see first blob is on bypass and the second one 60 watt 50 40 30 20 10 5 okay the good thing about this selectable wattage base selector thing is that it, it clicks into position and that's it it stays there it's a proper solid thunk it's you're not gonna you're not gonna hit it accidentally like like the old ego with the twist bottoms to them they didn't have any sort of like stage select like it will clunk into position it was literally you'd start using it and then realize that you're not actually getting the vapor out of it that you should because you'd, you'd knocked it down or twisted it down accidentally to nearly fuck all but this is clunk into position clunk it's so definite, that's brilliant, I love it. We look at the bottom, we've got the battery venting, three three battery vents. Right, up to the top, making sure that the thing is off and testing that goldy looking 510. Yep, stiff spring to it. And now if we put the whole bastard together, the cock ring you're gonna need for this bastard. Someone give Slack a call. Look at that. Fuck yes. One of these days they're going to put a taser in these things. And on that day, I will be buying a taser vaporizer. A taserizer. <laughs> okay guys, so that's enough of this arsehole with his hands. Back to those other two perverts on the sofa. And back in the room, right, thanks me for that, as we can all agree, as always, fucking epic unboxing. Right, talking about the tank first, it's a 30mm diameter tank because it's focused around that 26650 design for the whole pen. The tank at 50mm high, 50mm, uh, it gives you a 6ml capacity within the tank. So yeah, running down the tank, we'll start up top, you, you've got this sort of clear... 510-ish drip tip. Now, I thought it was glass. Tony pointed out it's plastic. Um, it's a glassy plastic. It's clear. The, the main problem with it is that while it is 510 sort of fit, it, it's a very tight 510, so you can put your own drip tip in there, but you're going to need to lube up to really shove it in there, you know, otherwise it's just not going to work. And about now seems a good time to interject that if you do ever have any sort of sticky silicon O-rings, a good course of action or best practice in this case is to lube it up with a bit of e-juice just whatever e-juice you're wearing <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just just you know work it around it and it will help it and while one is up at the top of the device who can but mention the fact that it has top fill which we love we love the top fill don't we tony top fill which apparently is rude now <laughs> apparently <laughs> Leading on to one of Slack's favourite sayings now, coming down the bottom, we find uh, <laughs> airflow control. Yeah, so you've got four nice big sort of grooves in there, and it just spins around to adjust it. None of this cock band rubbish, you know. It's, it's all here, baby. Definitely feels like a bit of a um, choke point, shall we say? 
bottleneck. Uh, we'll get into that later. But Wait for the cons. Good. And also we have the 510 connector, which has a decent thread and a tiny fucking minuscule little pin. Yeah, it doesn't just look small for the size of the device. It actually is small. But, yeah, it works. It's not the size. It's what you do with it. Knock yourself in the nuts. <laughs> <clears throat> the top fill itself, that, that works fine, you know, you, you take the top off. The, the only gripe I've got with this is that, yeah, once you take the top off, there's nothing apart from the two O-rings down the bottom to stop the glass popping off, you know, similar to the Cleto. Now, while we've had no problems with this unit, with the glass just popping off while filling and, and leaking everywhere, as a design, it's not as good as something like the crown where that glass is screwed in securely with a bit of metal that doesn't come off even when your top fill comes off. But yeah, like I said, no problems. Just echoing what Slack said there, as a design feature, you want structure to the actual tank itself, especially when you're using something this sort of size. It's a heavier battery at the bottom. The whole thing it is sort of like a heavy little bastard. You want some structural integrity there. Yeah, when this falls over, it is like felling a tree compared to, you know, knocking an e-cig over. So, talking about the airflow, it, it works really well. You can shut it right the way down to sort of like simulate a, a fairly decent mouth-to-lung experience, or you can open it right the way back up again, and it, it's got great airflow. Now, what I was saying earlier about the bottleneck is really more about the, the drip tip and the fact that that's smaller. They've done fucking brilliantly with the amount of airflow that you've got on this. But yeah, it would have been improved with a wider bore drip tip as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, for me, I mean, I like the fact that you can shut the airflow right off, and uh, that's good. And then with the tiniest of motions, you, you can have it so it's a really good sort of mouth-to-lung hip, which would be great for beginners. However, the range of turn is is like, you know, about two degrees, if that, of a circle to get it, you know, to go from a mouth-to-lung hip to straight to direct lung hip because there's so much airflow down the bottom. You can do it, it's just a lot of fine tuning there, but there's actually yeah, a whole lot more turning you can get to get it fully open. In my opinion, it would have been nicer to just have a little bit more control of that mouth to lung range, that really tight draw. But the fact that you can do it is good. The other thing about the airflow control ring is that it could have really benefited from that notched adjustment so that it clicks into position as, supposed it, as opposed to it just going, uh, uh. but it works. The other notable thing that we've experienced with this tank is that while it does seem sturdy, when I first got it and unboxed it, before I'd even fucking used it, those two O-rings at the bottom. What what we do when we unbox it is we do the unboxing video, and then if it's a tank, then we'll we'll sort of like clean it up so it's ready to use. It's just standard practice. It's something that I fucking live by. This with its two O-rings at the bottom, the O-rings I think had ad adhered to the to the glass. Which is standard. I mean, I've I've had that more than more than a couple of times. However, when trying to take the tank glass off, and I wasn't pinching the top of the glass, it cracked. It just cracked right the way up, and so I had to super glue that bastard back together because I didn't have. They don't give you a spare tank glass, which sucks. Yeah. See, that's where something like the crown with its sort of metal reinforcement, you know, I, I find that a little bit better, as we said. But, you know, we're not comparing it to the crown. It's just something you should be aware of. However, since then, we've not had any issues with it. It's sturdy, and when you're changing juice and stuff, filling up, you know, it doesn't try and pop off like we had with the Kalito. So, you know, it's pretty decent from that aspect. And um, while we're talking about the tank and stuff, uh, it'd be fair to mention that I've had a few sort of weird sort of juice issues coming in like it's been leaking a little bit but not like, never a full juice dump or anything like that you know it's just like i found it sort of bleeding out almost a, a little bit a couple of times so not quite sure what's going on there but generally it's pretty good you know it's just there's been a, a few incidents moving now on to coil options for it so in the box you get 2.2 .2 ohm triple coils loaded with it on the side of a replacement uh five pack of replacement coils that I got as well at the same time as getting the kit uh, it, it reads that you also get the option of 0 0.015, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and 0.5 yeah. fuck you motherfucker for thinking that I was going to fucking forget you fuckity fuck time. fuck fuck <laughs> <laughs> it, it is worth mentioning that these coils aren't 
commonly available like you know if you go go get calls for a Cleto or a crown or something you find them in most places not everywhere has these yet but you know hopefully that's coming and you'll get more options soon okay that's about it for the tank for now um obviously we'll revisit that when we talk about the kit as a whole however it's time to move on to the mod now usually the first thing we do on a mod is power range tech spec and features and quite often we don't really need to do that with a pen style device but you know this kind of has it all, you know, you do have that adjustable wattage down the bottom. And so starting off with that, you, you've got 5 watts, you've got 10 watts, then you go in 10 watt increments up to the full 60 watt. However, if that's not enough, and you are maybe running a 26650 dripper on here, you can whack it in bypass mode and away you go. The Vecino D30 battery itself is 91mm tall, it's, it's at that 26650 size 30mm diameter, it has a 3000 milliamp hour capacity uh, and it's got a sprung loaded 510 in it. And as for features and protections, we're talking about atomizer protection, short circuit protection, no atomizer alert and low voltage protection. If you're in total darkness, there's even an LED indicator to let you know the battery level. As well as that, it has USB charging with an actually usable light to tell you when it's charged. Okay, moving on now to button quality for you guys. Now, the, the device itself, it, it, it works really well. If you're operating in complete darkness, you're not looking, you're just sort of like searching for it, the button protrudes dirty bastard. The button protrudes enough that you're actually going to find it, which is good. Yeah, it could have been bigger though. I mean, this is a big unit and that button is, is a tiny little delicate thing to finger. And um, yeah, it, it just could have been bigger, you know, and it could have had a fucking usable LED in it so you can actually see in daytime how charged it is. You know, the, the LED is supposed to tell you your charge level, but basically your charge level is, oh, it's flat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, we're not in cons yet, so it's perfectly usable. So there we go. Yeah, it is usable. Uh, while we're talking about button quality, down the bottom you have this sort of twist dial to sort of set your wattage, which I better check what I've done. Um, you've got sort of like this anodized painted sort of affair to tell you what setting you're on, and you just sort of swirl it round and it, it works, it works fine. It's a little bit on the rattly side, but you know, it, it works perfectly, not had any issues there. Talking of not had any issues, I've had zero misfires with this button, albeit small. I've had a couple of bits where I've been pressing the side because I'm an idiot. Uh, but that aside, you know, when I actually press the button, it, it has worked every time, nice and reliable. Yeah, the only thing you really need to worry about in terms of operation of the device is the standard five clicks on, five clicks off, and away you go. Okay, I'm just going to quickly interject here before we finish off the rest of the battery that there is you know, finishing it off there is no menu operation there's no firmware there's no temperature control there's no changeable batteries anything like that so that's all stuff that we would normally cover it won't be covered in this so just moving swiftly on now to battery life yeah, for battery life i found it pretty reasonable i got most of a day out of it which is good you know it's kind of what you'd expect for a, a pen with 3000 milliamp hour or more a highlighter at this size i think than a pen but yeah yeah, it's reasonable battery life. While I got most of a, a day's worth out, out of the battery as well, it's 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 not a negative, but it's worth noting that I did detect when the battery level was dropping. As with some others, maybe an earlier review, maybe something else you want to check out, I don't know, um, it will automatically adjust down for you, so you don't necessarily notice the drop-off because it's gradual, whereas with this one it tries to maintain that level. Um, because it's trying to maintain that level, you notice that you're not getting the full hit from it. Not a negative, and it's not going to fuck everyone else off. It doesn't necessarily fuck me off, it's just something to note. Yeah, what I found with that is that it went, you know, so you're on full power, or 50 watts I was generally running this mm. at where, with the sort of built-in coil there. And that would run fine, but then all of a sudden you get a couple of hits where you just took a real dive and it was gone. Mm. Because it's tried to deliver that full power, you know, that you've set it to, uh, and, and it just gets to a point where it can't. And, you know, you don't get a lot of notice. The upshot for me was that I was never far from a USB port, so... <sighs> Yeah, I mean, it's it's not really a problem because you know you do expect your battery to run out, and so you charge it accordingly. Okay, so apparently we're done talking about the battery. Finally, and uh, that that moves us into the I don't know 
quarter way mark of this review and um yeah we, we get to talk about the kit as a whole first thing we had though is our sort of heat test torture test where we hit 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 see how it performs see how it handles the heat does it do you get any heat transfer down to the mod itself you know how it works so i'll shut up and we'll do this we've got about three quarters of a tank of juice it's dark we're wearing sunglasses let's do it Should point out this is with the stock drip tip as well. It feels like fucking ages since we've done a heat test. Here, try and find quick things to say while you're breathing. Fail. You can also take a look at the clouds and see what it's chucking. We've got it set to 50 watt on this triple coil. Bollocks, I was going to say that. What am I going to say on this one? Not a fucking lot by the sounds of it. Hot and solo. Last one. That's got to be good. Yeah, one more. I'll have another one. So absolutely fine. No no drop offs in the amount of uh, juice wicking. Absolutely fine heat. Yeah. So up top here, the, the the metal top of it is pretty hot. The drip tip itself got a little bit warm, but not hot. And, and when I say hot, it's not like unbearably hot. And you're not going to really be hitting it that hard. You may be at a high wattage, but you know it's handled the heat really well. There's not really any transfer down onto the mod. It's a little bit warm, but it, again, it's not hot, nothing to cause concern there. So yeah, it handles it pretty so well. So talking about the flavour for the tank, yeah, in general it is pretty decent actually. Yeah, quite small coils really, they're, they're not massive when you compare them to some of the coils that are out there nowadays. But even so, the flavour comes through quite well. And certainly during our torture test there, which you know, sometimes I find you lose a bit of flavour there. Occasionally gain flavour from just getting it really hot. But yeah, that was just really consistent throughout and uh, yeah, a good experience just echoing what slack said there i mean that the flavor that we're using in this is something that uh, <coughs> my friend here knocked up himself <laughs> so wiggly we're uh, we're used to it we <laughs> <laughs> no we know what it's supposed to taste like and during that heat test it, it performed as you would expect no as you would expect it performed admirably and stayed consistent throughout so we're happy yeah, another thing that was consistent throughout the heat test and sort of throughout our use of this device was the wicking of the coils. You know, it was absolutely no dry hits. That even that hit, 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 it was just every hit was just like, you know, okay, a little bit warmer, but you know, it was just like a fresh hit. It's like a fresh cup of coffee on a summer's morning. I suppose now is a good time to sort of talk about the spits and swallows after doing the heat test and didn't have any, any spits at all. It was fine. So probably due to the actual spit guard or mesh that have got loaded around the top of the coil. So it prevents any spit back coming up at you. Yeah, I've had no spit back during operation. Like I said, I did have a couple of little leaks around the tank, but nothing that was like, you know, chucking it down my throat, which is nice. Not chucking it down your throat. Mm. Not having it chucked down my throat is the bit that's nice. <laughs> Just to clarify. I suppose that's sort of something we all aspire to. Right, right. now we're going to move on to portability, size and weight. And as you can imagine, it's a pen-like device, but it's a fairly chunky pen-like device. So in terms of portability, yes, it's portable as like other pen devices. However, you're going to find it difficult to put like a vape band around it and then stick a lanyard on it. Sizes, as I just said, it's chunky little fucker. Also, weighing it, it weighs 10 grams less than the E-Leaf iPower 80 watt, the mod by itself. So, giving you a weight sort of comparison. And size, it's pen. It's pen. It's highlighter. It's bigger than a pen. All right. It's, it's like a crayon, baby crayon, you know. This unit, though, I mean, it really does lend itself for an out-and-about unit because there's no menu operation, you know, other than a quick twist, you know. It's just really easy to just sort of cart about. It's just one button, you know, nice and simple, so it does lend itself to portability. You've got a good battery life out of it, which, again, lends itself to that portability. 
One thing I will interject with here though is that a while ago, yeah, a long time ago, during our face-off review between the original iJust 2 and the C Fiber 100 Watt, I think I called the C Fiber the Kosh. I think this one has definitely just taken the crown for the old Kosh-like device. Mm. Quickly moving on to the style of the device, it's pretty much the same as a lot of pen devices out there where you've got your one colour metal. Now you get two options here, you get silver or black, we like the silver one, but yeah, they both look pretty decent. One thing I do like with the, the silver one, it looks pretty good with the clear glass and the clear glass up top, I do think it looks good. The styling on this is mainly yeah, the brushed silver, it's not particularly frilly, you've got the sort of air vents and the O-rings on display and it, and it looks nice, it's not a world changer changing thing but you know it, it's plain it does the job um, I think it looks nice yep hashtag matchy matchy for the warranty of the device um, you need to sort of see where you got it from and you, you will be covered by the sort of standard warranty again you break it you bought it ok guys we've reached that special stage in the show where we sum up by way of pros and cons as always starting with the cons so that we're ending on top of those beautiful bastards pros First up, for me, it's got to be that there's no reinforcement on the tank glass. You know, I, I'm not a fan of that just pop-off glass design when you take the top off to refill. Just echoing what Slack said there about the tank reinforcement, it does feel a lot safer when you, you, you sort of take the top off to fill it up, that the, the glass isn't just going to pop off to one side. Not that we're saying that it has done or it will do or anything like that. The other thing that I'm going to install with this one as well is the fact that we had that tank cracking incident when I first got it just by the silicons being adhered to the bottom of it and just trying to get it off and it fucking split on me that's an annoying bastard thing to happen to a new mod that you're looking forward to vaping yeah, just to be clear about that tank glass thing, uh, it, it's not a problem with this mod. It does work okay. It's more a problem with the way it is designed. Now, it would have been done like that to keep the weight down because this is, you know, a fairly big unit and you've got to do what you can to keep that weight down. But I, I just prefer the other way. Uh, if you don't, then great. Okay, finishing off this first con. Luckily, spares out of China are so cheap that you can pick them up so cheaply. It... it wasn't even a dollar so i bought two just in case but you know yeah if they're so cheap why isn't a spare included in the box yeah. the mind boggles yeah it's got to be the tiny drip tip up top i prefer a bigger chuff piece uh, on my mods and uh yeah you, while you can swap the drip tip out for your own favorite uh with the 510 o-ring sort of configuration it is a bit of a tight squeeze in there and if you do manage to force it in there it might get stuck next up on the cons is the few minor leaks that we had and they don't really qualify as leaks they'd probably be the classification would probably be a weep 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 cool whip. cool whip. Next up for me has got to be the battery light indicator, if it indeed has one. Now, actually, I know that it does have one because I was out walking the dog the other night. It's about midnight, and then at one point, the, the clouds came over the moon, and it was so dark I couldn't see anything. And there was this really faint light in my hand, and I realised that was the battery light indicator. It did exist. It wasn't just a myth. It really is there. But then the moon came out again and ruined it all, and I was back to guessing. Yeah, sadly, this uh, battery indicator thing seems to be a commonplace for a lot of these pen like devices however it doesn't negate the doing the whole fucking oh right there it is which works equally as well as in the clouds dark. in the sky no it needs to be dark to do it oh, but yeah. oh, well look it's fucking pitch black with two bastard lights in here oh yeah oh yeah oh, there we go yeah this is yeah meh and last up for the cons is the bottom adjustment for that five up to bypass uh, for what you're going to vape it at, it's got a bit of a rattle to it, that little control. It's in the design. It, it's not like it's going to fall off or anything like that. It just feels like it could have been done better. Yeah, it gives you a little bit of bad vibes about longevity. However, we've had no issues with it. I just want to be clear on that, you know. Mm. We seem like we've been ragging on the device a lot. A couple of the design ideas I'm not too keen on. But, yeah, in terms of operation, you know, th this has actually been pretty rock solid. And uh, including this adjustment, you know. So, 
who who knows what the future will hold we'll give it some more use there may be an update uh in a coming vlog so yeah stay tuned okay guys that's enough ragging on it for now so let's move over to those beautiful pros that we've been promising you all along first up has got to be that top fill action that we're getting with it it's just a brilliant addition and idea it's something that i've been we've both been saying for fucking ever ever since we've had been having to take off the bottom of devices or take it off your mod and then undo the bottom then you've got a handful of shit and then you've got a, it was just a fucking nightmare but this is good yeah, all units should have this, particularly these pen style ones, you know, um, because they're just so portable and, you know, handy. Why wouldn't it have handy features? And, and this one does, and it's a pretty decent implementation. Next up on the pros list for me has got to be the fact that it's variable wattage. I mean, pen sticks are great to sort of recommend to sort of beginners, and, you know, people like us love them as well, you know, but they don't have for beginners especially don't you can't turn it down you know you just generally they fire at what the coil's doing uh, and and that's it so if it's chucking too much vapor for someone then they can't turn it down here you can which i think is brilliant combine that with the fact that you've got a bypass mode as well so if you're chucking a dripper on there or something and you just you know want to go a little bit crazy then uh you know it's just brilliant having all that functionality in a pen style device Echoing what Slack said, it is a brilliant implementation. It's a great idea. It's, it, it fucking fits everyone across the board, doesn't it? I mean, this would be a brilliant step up for someone coming from like the Ego Twists, like we used to use back in the day. Yeah, yeah I had to look on eBay. They still fucking sell them. They're yeah, still making them in rainbow yeah. in rainbow colours, which is, it, it's, it fits so well, doesn't it? But then you've got the addition of the bypass. So if they want to sort of invest and... and take the step forward into into dripping sort of territory ever so tentatively with a single 3000 milliamp hour battery it can be done and if they like it if they enjoy the experience then they can step in both feet and buy buy the proper shit next up for the pros is the airflow for for the device the the airflow although it looks like fucking nothing like little four little slits in there it really does well even with that tiny tiny fucking mouthpiece mm. 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 yeah the airflow is good for me you know as a vapor i like it quite open um but also you know we always test out the sort of mouth to lung hits of a tank and, and yeah you can do that i mean the control is a little tight but you know you get the full control so you can have it exactly how you like it and i guess lastly um for this uh, it's got to be the fact that the ease of use as a kit you know these pen style devices are great you know five clicks on five clicks off and, and just away you go but also you know you get the menu operation and stuff it's just easy to use it's easy to carry about uh, it's just easy pop it up there easy and when you combine like the ease of use of this kit with the flavor the vapor the airflow all that other good stuff you know it comes out as quite a powerful kit and you know i'm impressed with its performance and with that resounding seal of approval from our very own slack it's about time to say goodbye to this review guys thank you for watching we hope you've enjoyed what you've been seeing and what we're doing for you if you do please drop us a like and do the whole subscribe thing because it helps us out a lot also, if you're not shy about these things, please follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram because there is talk amongst the wood people that we're a bit chatty. Yeah, um, it'd be great if you could give us a share as well, you know, get the word out there. And as well as that, if you've got any questions about this device or anything else, hit us up in the comments section below or find us on those social medias. But for now, guys, thanks for watching Smog Vlog. Bone dry M2. It's like <laughs> bone dry. There's like some lick in there or something. Right. Oh my fucking days. There's a really expensive monitor down there. Yeah. Just watch it within there. Yeah? I detected that. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, why the fuck does that still hurt? Because you're a girl. Yeah. No offence to the ladies. <laughs> in fact, yeah, they're all tougher than you. Actually. It's been in there for a while. In actual fact, there's what's the, oh, wood. You've got wood. <laughs> <laughs> it's just naturally big. It's not hard. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh, <sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> it all says your little chipmunk face in the camera. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, they've got no fucking context at all. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome okay. to Smog Vlog. Can you find some fucking gems? There's a whole fucking shelf full. I'm not sure which one this is. This... Oh, that smells like fucking bleach in there. Are you cleaning this out? That's nice. That is not helpful. <gasps> yeah, well... It smells like a fucking swimming pool. What what is going on in there? Oh, that's um, rhubarb and apple. Smell it again. Smell it again. Swimming pool. Rhubarb and apple. Vape it. Vape it first. Oh, fucking hell. What's this? Aqueous? This might be a long review, ladies and gentlemen. No. Candy shop apple. Whoops. Everything's fine. Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this first one might be a bit spitty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if there's a slight, slight hint of dribble, <laughs> we'll get some tissue. <laughs> ah. Ma. Ah. <laughs> ah, wrinkle in the armor. Chink. Yeah. Wrinkle in the... Winkle. <laughs> <laughs> Wrinkle. Winkle in the arm. Have you got like a metal cod piece? You've been drinking? Well, yeah, only cola. <laughs> Not brand specific. And some rum. Helping. <laughs> Stop pushing me. <laughs> so just <laughs> Probably do. I'm sure we've got something useful in there. Oh yeah, we don't <laughs> fucking say that every time. Hi, I'm Tony. This is Slack. Welcome to Smog Vlog. Today we're going to be reviewing the Vecino D30 by Wismec. <laughs> Right, okay. Oh, oh yeah, let's reward ourselves with a vape. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> We're eight minutes in. We've recorded about five seconds of footage and we have to stop for a vape. That was a hard five seconds. <laughs> Downstairs, taking off that will probably happen. Oh, this is going to be a long evening. It is. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Knob gobbler. We're going to be taking a look at the tank first, then we're going to go in. Come on, come on, come on. Top fill. And uh, don't forget the top fill. Yeah, well, that was... Get out, get out, get out. Why do you have to be wearing a monocle? <laughs> oh, God, not again. <clears throat> oh. And while we're up the top, who can but mention the fact <laughs> It's you, it's you. You and your damn monocle. <laughs> Frothing. 
<laughs> Another one to go with girth <laughs> and moist. Uh, You can tell we haven't done this for a week. <laughs> Why won't it help, Tony? No, you're right, it can't. Ow, that was Mr. Right, eh? <laughs> I put the thing down a bit too hard. <laughs> Bush! <laughs> Directly on Mr. Righty. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, here, have a juicy tank. Um, sorry. In the box you get 2.2 ohm triple. So in the box you get 2, two ohm triple coils. Point two. <laughs> Take two. Two, really? Too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nope, that's it. And that's it. Ran smoothly up the bum. <laughs> Slid right in. <laughs> Which leads you to question for the rest of the day, do I have a massive arsehole? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> Apparently, we're done with no, talking about the battery again. Oh, like can I? So. They, they, how can they hear you when I'm laughing over the top <laughs> of you? <laughs> we well, seem like we've been ragging on the device a lot. A couple of the design issues, a couple of the design, but a couple of the design was the wicking of the coils. You know, it was absolutely no dry hits. That even that hit, 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 it was just every hit was just like, you know, okay, a little bit warmer, but you know, it was just like a fresh hit. It's like a fresh cup of coffee on a summer's morning. What? I don't know. Why did you not? I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. What have you put in that? <laughs> oh, this is the can of boys. Oh, no. no. <laughs> Uh, stop laughing, my bladder. I'm not laughing, your bladder. You're laughing, your bladder. <laughs>